Hi there. So for today, we're going to identify gravitational potential energy and calculate for the potential energy. So I have here two example pictures showing something that has uh, or related to what potential energy is. Remember that an object can store energy as a result of its position. Object is at rest. Therefore, they are or they are having this potential energy. A boy on top of the mountain and the barbell being looked at. So in potential energy, again, as I said, it is the energy possessed by an object as a result of its position. It is the stored energy. So let's say there is a pile driver stores energy when it is held at an elevated position and releases its energy when it is used to ram object. For example, the heavy ball of a demolition machine is storing energy when it is held at an elevated position. Same with this pile driver. So this stored energy of position is referred to as potential energy. So in the gravitational potential energy, it is the energy possessed by an object because of its position, a vertical separation from the Earth. Examples. If there is an apple on top of this pile of books, this apple is being lifted to a certain height, vertically, resting there on top of the piles, and then it has its mass and being pulled by the gravity. So it has potential or gravitational potential energy. Same with this tractor is lifting the object. This particular object to have the mass, it has been lifted into a certain height and it was being pulled by the gravity. If there is, let's say, a drone uh, sling, Similarly, it has or it is able to store energy as a result of its position. When assuming its usual position, there is no energy stored in the sling. Yet, when its position is altered from its usual equilibrium position, the sling is able to store energy by virtue of its position. So that energy or stored energy is called potential energy as well as the car resting on top of the mountain as also its potential energy the tire on top of this uh, let's say a certain height has a stored energy as well as this object rolling down during that time, it has its potential energy. So let's say we have the same box being placed in three different places. On top of the mountain, on the floor, and let's say in the wall or underground. So to compute for the gravitational potential energy of the box, we must first define a reference point that would be zero or equivalent to zero so in that case let us use the floor as our reference point anything above the floor is positive and anything below is negative therefore to calculate for the gravitational potential energy you need to multiply the mass the gravity and the height so p graph is the amount of potential energy in joules that's the unit of the uh, potential energy mass is kilogram height is in meter and gravity that is in meter per second squared so when it comes to the gravity you have to determine what planet but since we are talking about or we are here on Earth, we're going to use 10 meter per second squared as the force of gravity. 
So therefore, if we're going to use the triangular formula, let's say the P graph or the potential energy is missing, all you have to do is to multiply the mass to the gravity of the Earth, let's say that's our gravity, then to a certain height. Again, to find the gravitational potential energy. If the mass is missing in the word problem, then all you have to do is to divide the gravitational potential energy to the gravity of the Earth multiplied to the height. So you have to multiply first before you come up with um, division. Gravity multiplied to the height and then the value of the GPE or the gravitational potential energy uh, divide to the product of these two. Again, that is to find the mass of the object. So as well as if the height in the word problem is missing, all you have to do is to multiply or get the product of mass and then gravity. Once you get it, then you have to, multi you have to divide the value of the GPE in joules to the product of the mass and gravity. So the box placed on top of the mountain has a positive gravitational potential energy. And on the floor, that is equivalent to zero because that is our reference point. And in the well is negative gravitational potential energy. So what does it mean? That even the object is at rest, it may still have no gravitational potential energy because we use that as our reference point. So let us solve for this. A box has a mass of 5.8 kilograms. The box is lifted from the garage floor and placed on a shelf. If the box gain, let's say 145 joule of energy, how high is the shelf? So in this case, you have to identify the given in the word problem. Let's say um, we have, uh, for the mass, we have 5.8 kilograms. Our gravitational potential energy is 145 Joule. Then we're going to look for the height. So again, remember the units used. For the gravitational potential energy, the unit is Joules. For the mass, it's kilogram. For the gravity, meter per second squared. And for the height, it's meter. And then, with the use of the formula to get the gravitational potential energy, since the height is missing, the formula that we're going to use is, you have to get the product of the mass and the gravity first, and then divide the value of the GPE to the product of the mass and gravity. Example, 140, uh, for the mass, we have 5.8 kilograms. You have to multiply it to 10 meter per second squared. Then, you can now divide 145 joule to 58 newton, and that is, or the height is 2.5 meters. So again, the shelf is 2.5 meter high. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about uh, getting or identifying what gravitational potential energy and as well as how are we going to calculate for the uh, gravitational potential energy. So see you next time in the next review. Bye-bye.